Dinosaurs dominated the planet for about 170 million years. That's roughly a hundred times the amount that modern humans have been here. They came in all sizes. Some of them were no bigger than a chicken. Others were the largest land animals the planet has ever seen. Some even flew in the air. As the planet warmed and cooled, as the continents drifted and changed beyond all recognition, one thing always seemed to stay the same. Dinosaurs. Whatever Earth threw at them, they adapted and survived. And then, about 66 million years ago, they vanished. Every single land dinosaur disappeared. It's a puzzle that paleontologists have been trying to piece together for over a hundred years. The question is as fascinating as ever. My name is Danny Burke, and what really happened to the dinosaurs? Firstly, the dinosaurs aren't technically extinct. Some of their descendants are still alive today. In fact, you probably saw one recently and didn't even know it. Birds. Their ancestors were feathered dinosaurs. For the purposes of this video, I'll be referring to dinosaurs as everything except birds. But why did they survive when every other type of dinosaur died 66 million years ago? That's a very long time ago. Paleontologists trying to find out what happened back then is like a detective turning up to a murder scene years after the crime. Everything has changed over time, and the clues can be very hard to come by. So, we start with what we know. We know there was a mass extinction of Earth's life forms around 66 million years ago called the Cretaceous Paleogene Extinction, otherwise known as the KT Extinction. During this time, an estimated three quarters of all plant and animal species on the planet went extinct, including land dinosaurs. The main theory is that the KT extinction was caused by a huge asteroid impacting the Earth. In 1990, scientists identified the Chicxulub crater, buried under the Mexican state of Yucatan, as the site of the asteroid impact. The crater has an average diameter of 180 kilometers, about 110 miles, and geologists think that the asteroid would have been roughly 10 kilometers or 6 miles wide. This collision would have released the same energy as 100 teratons of TNT. That's over a billion times the energy released by the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. This would have wiped out most nearby life forms, but all life on Earth would eventually be under threat. An impact like this would have triggered a nuclear winter. 77 billion metric tons of soot, dust and debris would have been thrown up into the atmosphere and swept across the planet, plunging Earth into a nuclear winter. Sunlight would have been blocked out for two years across the entire planet, causing global temperatures to drop by 16 degrees Celsius. This would have massively disrupted the food chain. No light means no photosynthesis for plants, which means no food for the herbivorous dinosaurs, which in turn means no food for the carnivorous dinosaurs which fed on them. Then, in the years that followed, the carbon dioxide dumped into the atmosphere would have created a super global warming effect, trapping heat on Earth and smothering any life that survived. I guess that's it then, case closed. This nuclear winter causing asteroid changed the Earth so quickly that those that survived the impact didn't have time to adapt to the hostile environment and gradually went extinct. Well. For some scientists, this doesn't quite add up. They believe that for every single type of dinosaur to die, as well as many other species, something else must have happened. For many of them, this something was supervolcanoes. There is evidence that during the same geological period as the KT impact in Mexico, huge supervolcanoes in what is now India were spewing out molten rock and gases at a rate that dwarfs our modern day volcanoes. They ejected 1.3 million cubic kilometers, about 300,000 cubic miles of molten rock and debris enough to bury the whole of Alaska to the height of the world's tallest skyscraper. The gases, debris and toxic elements such as mercury began affecting life about 250,000 years before the KT impact and continued until about 500,000 years after. In fact, some scientists propose that the asteroid impact may have even caused seismic shockwaves that tripled the output of the supervolcanoes, although further research is needed to confirm this. What we do know is that in the space of less than a million years, all life on Earth had to face the effects of both the asteroid and the supervolcanoes. Perhaps the dinosaurs could have survived one or the other, but the combination of the two appears to have pushed them over the edge. The crime scene of what killed the dinosaurs is a messy one, and a very old one. It's been a difficult task to try and figure out what exactly happened to the creatures that dominated the planet 66 million years ago. But as the old saying goes, life uh finds a way. Small mammals and feathered dinosaurs managed to eke out a living thanks to their varied diet and complex brains. With the dinosaurs rule of the planet at an end and the Earth's environment slowly recovering, it was time for these small creatures to shine. The mammals became the modern mammals we see today, including us. The feathered dinosaurs became birds, the last living dinosaurs. So, what really happened to the dinosaurs? At the moment, we think a huge asteroid hit Earth 66 million years ago at a time when life was already under stress from massive super volcanoes, sending the Earth into a climate catastrophe that three quarters of all life couldn't handle, including all of the dinosaurs except for the ancestors of birds. Was it as simple as that? Probably not. 
but it's an old crime scene that may take plenty of work yet to figure out all the answers. Maybe only the birds will ever know. My name is Danny Burke, and you've been watching Life's Biggest Questions. Don't forget to like and comment on your way out the door, and subscribe to us for more big answers to big questions. Thank you